Hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Coffee and Crypto. We've got a special guest, Julian, here with us today. He's the owner of Kingdom.Soul, which is a play-to-earn metaverse game that our game guild is really excited about. So I'm really happy that you're able to join us here today, Julian. And I've got a series of questions ready. Actually, we got our game guild to do some deep diving research into your project. And I feel like they came up with some really good questions. So if you're ready, is it okay if we jump right into it? Okay, awesome. So just starting with the first question, uh, back in September 2021, you mentioned that the new version being worked on would be a play to earn metaverse. So I imagine this is where you took the leap into Web3 for your game. And do you mind sharing your journey of how Kingdom.so started and really that shift into Web3 or crypto? Yeah, so actually uh, Kingdom started like uh, as a small weekend project. Um, okay. At this time, it was only the map. So was only the map where people was uh, able to buy some land um, mm -hmm. with uh, normal money. Okay. And it was mostly to promote uh, business. So actually at this time, you was only able to take like, for example, uh, three or four tiles uh, to promote uh, your, uh, your website and to add some uh, like uh, a little uh, description about your business. Okay. Um, and then I published it on uh, Product Hunt and uh, many, many people uh, started to buy some land and it was pretty like, uh, it did like a, a little buzz uh, pretty fast. And uh, many people started to, to ask me why I don't do, do it as a Web3 project. Uh, like for example, they they ask, they want to like uh, to sell the land to someone else or to be able to exchange some tiles okay. and they uh, recommend me to to create like for example nfts and uh, i started to learn about it and uh, i started to be very interested about it so i decide to to make the switch at this moment and also i started to to know about uh, metaverse and especially uh, 2d metaverse okay like for example, uh, Getter.ton, Dotton, sorry, uh, did a post about it and explained what uh, that metaverse don't need to be only on 3D but can be also on 2D. For sure. So um, I, um, so yeah, I decided to transform this little small project on a bigger project, and uh, I started to to develop uh, on the map a real game. Uh, with like a pixel art type of uh, 2D game mm -hmm. where people can uh, buy land, but also uh, explore the land and meet other people. So it's multiplayer. So now you can buy the land and also meet your friend in inside the land. And we are uh, now we are building more features uh, on top of it. That's awesome. Well, I know as a game guild, we're definitely happy you went the Web3 route. And uh, just to kind of make a little mention on the 2D art, I absolutely love it. I think it's perfect for the genre of the game. It's really mm -hmm. nice. The anim the animations of the sprites and just kind of how the tiles work. It definitely gives me a lot of that like Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon yeah, kind of vibe, yeah. right? Which actually um, leads me into the next question. Uh, you mentioned at some point that the game was inspired a bit by Stardew Valley and Gather Town. And we're just kind of curious, what was the reason you chose this direction as a game? I know you kind of explained a little bit in your first answer there, but maybe if you could elaborate why you kind of tied it to that genre. And what would be a great way to explain some of the main features and similarities that players can expect? So actually, it's like, uh, it's mostly, uh, it's like I, I am creating it also for me. For myself, so it's like uh, I think it's a good, um, good way to create something. Is like when you create it for for yourself first, like uh, to do to do something that you you will like uh, and you will uh, want to use yourself. Yeah. And uh, for example, I, I really like the what can I say like uh, I really like the the concept of metaverse. Mm -hmm. But for example, I know that myself I will never. Uh, I will never have enough time to to put like a headset and to be uh, and to engage in a metaverse in 3D or with a VR for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I def definitely want to sometimes just take my uh, pick up my phone uh, when I'm waiting for a coffee or when I'm in a coffee shop or when I have some time to kill. 
just to take my phone and to play uh, a little game, like uh, in a in a casual casual way. So I decide to build Kingdom in in this way. So a very simple game, and uh, where it's very easy to engage in any device. So actually now you you don't even need to download the application. You can just uh, come to the website and uh, on any simple device, you will be able to access the game and to play for like five or 10 minutes and then uh, do something else. So I uh, I decided to take this direction to make it mm -hmm. super casual. And also, of course, is is about um, technically is much more easy to, to make a 2D game. Uh, I know that there are many projects uh, like Web3 projects that Uh, make a big prom prom promise to the community, mm -hmm. like um, they promote like uh, to build uh, like a tri triple A game uh, in 3D, and is usually projects that take like six or seven years to to build with a lot mm -hmm. of money. And uh, I I was worried to I decided to take this patch also to be sure that uh, to deliver what I'm what I was promising to my community at this time. To be sure that uh, to be to be sure that I am able to do what uh, what uh, what I was prom promoting to them, and it's much oh. more easy to to make it in two Ds and three D actually. Okay, well, it's interesting you bring that up. So a couple kind of unique points from a game guild and a business perspective is usually game guilds were actually not looking for games that you spend ten hours a day on, you know, with the headset and the full metaverse. Because when you're mm -hmm. looking at different Web three or play to earn opportunities, you got to think about the scholars, the people in your guild. There's only so much time people can dedicate to certain projects. Yeah. So there's almost this balance that you got to think about from a business. Like, is this project viable so that our players can play maybe half an hour or an hour a day, not need to spend kind of the eight hours. So that's actually a really attractive feature in the fact that you built that game kind of with that casual aspect where you don't need to spend mm -hmm. your entire day playing that actually makes it a lot more attractive for game guilds like us because now I don't have to worry about taking up all of my scholars' time with one project. They can actually multitask across a few. And uh, then you bring up- a good you point, yeah. yeah, and you bring up the point about like the AAA games with six, seven years. You know, I think the thing is we want to play games today, right? We need, mm, we need some you. stuff now. So mm. being able to have a viable product that's out, that's fun, you know, and I really love the multiplayer aspect too. That's really cool from a game guild's perspective, having the ability, you know, to eventually be able to have all kinds of people be able to join in. You know, I know you did a bit of a demo there on YouTube, kind of showing like having a collaboration of a bunch of people on the same tile, being able to chat. Yeah. I know we're, we're really excited to be able to do that as a game guild. So yeah, just kind of some insight from our side that uh, it's definitely more attractive the route that you went for those kinds of reasons, because that's what we're looking for as a business. And I'll just kind of jump into the next question here. Is it still your goal to build a team to create a decentralized app that's user-friendly and sustainable? And if so, why the choice between decentralized over centralized? So actually, yeah, I would love to, to make it more decentralized. Um, okay. the, problem, uh, the problem about it is like, uh, I don't... I, I want to to keep it very accessible to everyone. And uh, if you if I make it uh, totally decentralized uh, day one, uh, the problem is like everyone will need a wallet to access and to start to play. And um, I think it's not a good strategy because like um, it's pretty hard to build a game if you target only people that are already into Web3. Uh, mm -hmm. So people that already have a wallet and already have the the knowledge to understand all the ecosystem, and because the, the player base is still uh, pretty low on uh, Web3, so mm -hmm. I, I decide, yeah, so I decide to to make it <coughs> totally accessible to everyone. But to do it, uh, it was not possible to make it uh, decentralized first. So my strategy will be like to to allow everyone to, to start to play now. And uh, then when, the, when Web3 will be more, um, when more people will be into Web3, uh, we'll start to decentralize, uh, decentralize, decentralize the game. 
Well, I think you're ahead of the curve there because a lot of the top projects that we consider top projects are doing exactly what you just said, kind of a combination of both mm. and being able to tap into Web2 people because we know that's such a huge amount of player base. It would be silly to only accommodate just for the Web3 because we want to mm. think of, you want to think about long-term growth, sustainability. And that's something okay. we've noticed as a game guild. Actually, in fact, even some AAA projects who were originally Web3 only have just in the last couple of months came out and said, actually, we're doing a free to play model. We want to attract web two people. You know, the web three is kind of going to be something separate. So it's interesting to see a lot of uh, projects kind of take that direction. So it's definitely exciting to hear that from you guys too. I think you're ahead of the curve, you know, when it comes to play to earn, because we need that, right? That That's how the space is going to grow. There's so many players who still don't even properly understand web three or NFTs yeah, yeah. or, or yeah. setting up a wallet and having the ability to let them play and then have that crypto aspect, something that they could slowly learn or figure out, I definitely think mm. is a, a smart way to go. So kudos to you there. Mm. And also, we, we want people, uh, we want like uh, web to people, like just people that start to play the game without any wallet or any money. Mm -hmm. uh, on Kingdom, they will be able to, it will take time, but uh, they will be able to start to earn money uh, in, inside the game. And we believe that uh, if, for example, they get like $100 in the game money, mm -hmm. uh, it will be much more easy for them to decide to jump into yes. Web3 because they will need to jump to with all the money, you know? Correct. And In order to distract it out, they're going to have to figure that aspect yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a big incentive if you say to someone, okay, if you want to, to take your $100 and to bring it to the real world, you need to sign up and you need to 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 create your wallet. Is uh, I guess more uh, more interesting than to say to someone just to start the game or to try the game, you need to to sign up and to to get your wallet. I think that's smart too. There's actually I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there's a recent play to earn title called Nino Kuni Cross Worlds that just came mm. out. And Nino Kuni is a big name. It's made by Netmarble. They're a huge game development company. And mm. basically, they, they almost didn't even tell anyone that it was going to be Web3. It's like, here's our new game. And then you're playing the game. You're earning this Terrarite token. But that's the catch. If you want to take it out or do anything with it, now you've got to figure out the Web3 component. And that's yeah. worked really, really well for them because they kind of poised it as Web2. And now that Web3 is optional. But who isn't going to want to get that, extract that value, especially if they've been playing for long enough? Well, that actually kind of leads me into my next question. This, this is segueing really well. We were talking about gold and stuff. One thing that I thought was really impressive, and I also personally really liked, is how you pegged gold to Ether. And I, we're just curious, mm. what was your decision behind that? Actually, it's, it's for which is the same reason is to is to make to make it more easy for for people. Like um, because like I didn't want to create my own token. Okay. Uh, because there is, uh, for me, two problems about it is like the first is uh, if you create your own token, uh, you need to make it. Uh, people need to have a to have a wallet to to start, mm -hmm. because to earn the token they will need to to have a wallet mm -hmm. or or you will have to to keep the token for them and but you make it stuff more complex, mm -hmm. and also the problem of uh, of token is like. Uh, from in my in my point of view, it attracts uh, bad player like people that would just uh, want to want to invest into the game to make the token uh, go up, and then uh, they will uh, withdraw the money when it will up, and you will they will want to to just like uh, to trade on the on the token, you know. And there are so many projects that. Have an issue right now with this because I need yes. to to find so many um, so many mechanisms to to keep the the token in a mm -hmm. good shape, and it just like it make everything very complex and uh, like uh, so so yeah so I I prefer to just to don't have any to to don't don't have token uh, for now and then we can develop the game and develop the the player base. And then maybe one day when the game will be more uh, more strong and the player base more strong, uh, we'll start to to create a token. But it just like for me is not a good strategy to create your 
your own token right uh, at, at first. Well, I hope a lot of projects take a note from you because I think it's brilliant how you did that. I mean, just from the complexity standpoint alone, it makes it so much mm. simpler investing because now we just need to know what the price of Ether is. And that as that fluctuates, we're you know, and I also like a lot of people talk, don't talk about this, but there's market maker companies that work with a lot of these game projects that buy and sell to try to help that buy pressure, sell pressure, and the complexities mm. and the amount of money that companies have to spend to do that, all just to try to help their token stay at a decent price. If that money went into development or staffing or the community, I feel like the projects could grow a lot quicker rather than dedicating so much time and resource to trying to help their token. And I think one thing we can agree on, a lot of projects don't quite have tokenomics properly figured out yet. You know, we've kind of seen that with a lot of other larger projects and, you know, they're, they're constantly trying to make changes and updates and do things, but, you know, Axie Infinity is a good example. Pegasus mm, is, is, is another one. And I actually think if more companies went the route that you did by pegging to Ether, Bitcoin, you know, pick your top 10 coin almost even, maybe they're on the Solana network, they could peg to Solana. I think that's mm. going to make things a lot simpler and yeah, easier for players to get their heads mm. around too. Because like you said, then you're not trying to time the market and pump and dump tokens and, and all this stuff. It lets you enjoy the game. You're buying the assets to, you know, un intentionally or buying the gold to invest in the game. And mm. that, that was one part that personally I was really impressed with. And I know a lot of the other members in our game guild were just like, oh my God, why aren't more projects doing this? Right. So I think it was quite genius the route that you went there and it's definitely mm. exciting to see from a game guild too because it really does simplify everything right it really it, does yeah and uh, i think it's more easy also for um, web to people like to just like to understand the game because like just this notion about if you have your own token and you have to explain like it's, it's, it's pretty hard to understand like uh, you have to people need to understand the economy there is there's a lot of notion really hard to understand and uh, and I guess, like, uh, I mean, like, if, for example, I take uh, my girlfriend, for example, will never uh, spend time on game like it because she will don't want to learn about all this, all this mm -hmm. aspect. Uh, and it's not fun. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, it's fun for, I mean, for some people, it's very fun to, to learn about it. But it's um, difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. It's, it's a lot of difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think of one other benefit too, and hopefully you don't mind talking about this a little bit, but I think about just the longevity and sustainability for your company and your project, having your gold pegged to Ether, I actually mm. feel a lot more confident in your project lasting many, many years, rather than your tokens being the thing that pays your team. So I'll give you an example, a lot of play to earn projects, they might have 20% of their own token allocation dedicated to paying their team members, their staff. Well, as that token price fluctuates and does the thing that it does, some projects are actually running into difficulties with that because if their token goes down quite a bit and 20% was allocated for team, but the team's salaries are still a certain amount, it's obviously causing some challenges. But it's kind of nice to know, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that means most of your treasury would actually be in Ether. So people really just have to have conf confidence in ETH, which most people do. Right, mm. rather okay, than having yeah. confidence in the token that you launch. Mm. So, yeah. Once again, I'm I'm really impressed with that. Uh, okay, and so it, go mm. ahead. No, and I mean, if you have your your own token, like uh, usually, especially if you start to if you are like a small project like Kingdom, mm. Mm -hmm. um, the total value of your token will be pretty low, and uh, it's very easy for someone to just like make your token go very down or very up. So yeah, it's, yeah. I mean what you said yeah totally makes sense yeah that's a good point you're actually more at risk for market manipulation and whales and stuff coming in there especially if you're a new project and you launch your token too early great mm. point now there was one other thing and i thought this was really interesting and i'm definitely hoping to get some insight from you here uh it mentioned that kingdom sells to players there's virgin tiles virgin genesis mm. tiles also production plans can you explain this in a little bit more detail and how people might go about contacting you to purchase those yeah so actually uh now you can uh you can buy land on the on kingdom so okay, this yeah. is already uh, already done so you can uh, um there's we have two type of land there is like a standard standard land mm -hmm. uh, actually uh 
is, is important to know like on kingdom there is no uh, the map is uh, is in, in, infinite infinite sorry oh wow so okay. the, there is there is no limit we don't have like for example 10000 uh, 10000 parcel of land is like uh, it will never uh, it will never end so we That's don't have cool. any limit about the about the map okay. and the good thing about it is like um, the price of uh, standard land will never uh, will never change it will be okay. always like now is about uh, uh, i guess like 30 dollars or, so, or a little bit less um, and you will be always like uh, pretty small like it uh, and the good thing about it is like um, th there is some problem for example with uh, the sandbox mm -hmm. where you have a very limit limited space and uh, now the land are very expensive yeah. So only, uh, I mean, like uh, a lot of brand and a lot of big company buy land, but uh, uh, normal people is is hard for uh, for normal people to buy a little uh, little land and build yeah, something. Yeah, their price. So, yeah, exactly. The, the price is is is, uh, is too strong, and uh, the problem is like this type of project start to look like uh, big ads, you know, because like. Yes. Uh, a big company by land and create content uh, related to the brand. So it starts to don't make so much sense because it's like a, like a really big ads for all this brand. And so, yeah. you know, a lot of Web3 people are trying to get away from that aspect with Web2 a little bit too. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So finally, it's, <laughs> it's like a loop. And uh, so, yeah, we decided to, to make it uh, totally... Uh, like uh, without any limit, so okay. anyone in uh, anyone can buy uh, can buy land. Um, and after we have like Genesis land, so this mm -hmm. is land that will produce more resources. Okay. And mm -hmm. we decided to make it uh, to to have incentive for people that uh, come to the game right now. Uh, I mean, in the, in, at the start. Okay. Um, and then about the the plan, it will be about like uh, really soon we'll be able to build stuff inside the land, and we'll uh, sell a plan to build stuff. So for example, uh, you will have the plan to build a fire camp. Okay. And thanks to this uh, object, you will be able to build your fire camp and uh, with some resources. Like for example, uh, you will need uh, ten wood and uh, to build your fire camp. But you will need to have the, the plan to build it. I see. Okay. Are all the plans and everything going to be able to be purchased right through the website? Same with all these lands that you talked about. So people don't have yeah. to necessarily reach out to you like maybe they did way back when the project started. No, no, everything will be available directly on the on the game. Yeah. Oh, wicked. Awesome. Okay. That's really exciting. Um, I like that you're kind of keeping the price flat for players and the map is infinite because that is a big problem with a lot of these projects, like you mentioned with Sandbox, where eventually you just mm. get priced out, you know, and I know a lot of that's a big frustration with a lot of people in this space. They're very interested in a lot of these projects. They see a lot of promise, but when it's thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars just to get started, you've got to know what you're doing before you're going to make a sizable investment like that. Mm -hmm. And I, and I almost feel like it can have a counter productive aspect where you want your product to grow. You want more people to play. You want more people to join. And if you're pricing everybody out, I kind of worry about long-term, you know, what that's going to mean for players and, and how companies are going to be able to kind of accommodate that. Alluvium is another mm -hmm. great example. You know, we've seen that with the Alluvium land sale, you know, yes, it went really well for them, but there's just so many people in the world who simply couldn't access it, right? They had yeah, no exactly. way to take mm. part in that play to earn. Now, yes, there's a free to play component, just like some other games are doing. But I think when we think about especially people in developing countries or third world countries where I think yeah, we exactly. can all agree, this is huge for them. There's a lot of opportunity there. Being able to get started for $30 for a piece of land is possible you know, compared mm. to the thousands for alluvium. So I'm really glad you did that. Um, I do have kind of a side question here. I know it's a little bit off script, but <clears throat> is there any development issues with having the map infinitely be able to go? No. That's something I'm kind of curious. Actually, no, like uh, um, about the, the map, it's just like uh, we just need to load the data uh, when you, a little bit like a Google map, you know, Google okay. map is is 
very big and they just uh, load the data uh, when you scroll actually or when you move uh, somewhere else mm -hmm. and about the game uh, actually for now um, we we have like uh, for every tiles every tiles is a little game actually so when you click on the tiles you will mm -hmm. uh, you will come to the 2d game but every single tiles is a mini game so it make it make you make everything more simple about development because we just have to manage one little space by little space you know that makes sense so to be just if, first... go ahead no, sorry, sorry so even if we have like uh, one billion of uh, little tiles mm -hmm. uh it will be uh, we always have to manage one little tiles by little tiles so that makes sense i have to admit that was actually pretty Addicting almost going to all the different tiles, collecting the mm. carrots, picking up some of the stones and the flowers. I, I found myself just kind of systematically clicking yeah. on all the tiles to collect a lot of and, things. Yeah, and it, it would be uh, very interesting when, uh, because like uh, normally early next month, uh, mm -hmm. people will be able to build stuff inside the tiles. So they will start to put uh, uh, like a little fire camp. And then uh, so we, we are creating so many objects that people will be able to, to build. That's and cool. uh, even building, so you will be able to on the tiles to come to a building, and then uh, so that means that the tiles will uh, grow also vertically. Oh, so for okay. example, you you create a little school and you mm -hmm. come to the little school, and then in the little school you will find maybe a hidden room, so you will come to another place and you can uh, uh, or dungeon, for example, uh, you can go to a dungeon uh, very oh, cool. uh, I mean, very big, and you you come to but yeah so um, yeah this will make will make the game very interesting when people will start to create stuff inside so you will discover so many different uh, different uh, different space created by uh, by people well i can't wait i mean we got our kingdom started i've already got some of our game guild mm. members in there a lot of people kind of having the same impressions they're like this is super cool so we're definitely going to be right there with you and as soon as those buildings are up i'm gonna we're gonna start developing mm -hmm. our kingdom a little bit more too so yeah. it's exciting yeah and I, I forget to say also like uh we plan also to make people able to create uh our own content so we'll okay. create like a pixel art editor inside the game a little bit like on uh, on the sandbox okay so people one day will be able to create uh new content uh that's really attractive so that's, this, that's, this yeah cool. this will make will make it very uh yeah very interesting about art and what people will imagine and, yeah i also very forward. excited about it yeah. Mm. yeah and i think about the dungeons too that sounds pretty cool yeah, you know, yeah. Whatever, whatever that's going <laughs> to kind of entail yeah. um okay yeah. so just kind of uh, moving along here what are some of the things and you kind of just touched on that there's going to be buildings that are coming up uh, is there anything else that we can kind of look forward to, like what's on the roadmap for this year and then what's planned for next year moving forward, just so everyone kind of knows? So for, for this year, the, the first big update will be like uh, to allow people to create stuff. So okay. like the tile editor. So uh, this is a, is the next stuff. And then uh, we plan like for maybe end of this year to, to have uh, NFTs. So okay. now we like everything is NFTs, but not uh, off chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, soon you will be able to mint your objects or your tiles uh, into NFTs on uh, Polygon or Ethereum. Nice. Um, so this what made you be, uh, what made you guys decide to add the Polygon routing? Because I know we're kind of got the Ethereum right now. Maybe do you mind mm -hmm. if I just quickly ask about that? Because I'm uh, like uh, about our community, like uh, a lot of people uh, come from uh, other Polygon projects. Okay. And uh, they uh, mostly is about the fee. Mm -hmm. uh, on Ethereum, the fee are pretty high, but now is is less. But uh, anyway, sometimes it's very high. Yeah. And uh, we think it's a good idea to to have two chains, uh, to integrate two chains, so uh, some people are more comfortable with Ethereum and some uh, with the Polygon. So it's just to make sense. Um, to give more choice to to people and also to to save some uh, some energy about the, okay, about awesome. the fee and uh, and what about long term goals? Is there anything else that you're kind of thinking about in, on the uh, horizon? Yeah, about the long term, it will be like uh, mostly people be able to create uh, content. 
Okay. Uh, so this and also another aspect is like uh, um, people will be able to promote uh, businesses or passion to the game. So actually, like uh, mm. I, I see, I see Kingdom as a, like a game, but also a social network in the same time. Okay. Um, so for example, we have someone like. Uh, tell me that uh, she have like a pretty big uh, kingdom mm -hmm. and she's passionate about chocolate. Okay. And she, she want to, she said to me, like she really want to just talk about chocolate inside the <laughs> kingdom. And she want to just share the passion that she have about chocolate inside her kingdom. And uh, is a use case that are, I think is very interesting. Like for example, she will be able to organize a event around the fire camp. Mm -hmm. uh, where she will talk about chocolate or maybe she have a business around it and she will be able to promote what she do and maybe one day we can imagine that people sell stuff directly on kingdom and uh, you can okay. buy a uh, pizza for example uh, you come to uh, pizza hut uh, that uh, pizza hut yeah. can create a little pixel art uh, a shop where you can come and buy your pizza and uh, give your address and get your pizza in, in the real world so That's cool. uh, I would love to mix like uh, reality and uh, and metaverse mm -hmm. uh, inside Kingdom, but but for sure we'll always keep this uh, very uh, simple aspect and uh, with two uh, D and uh, yeah. we want to keep this simple aspect, but make it more uh, connect to the real world. Actually, that's really cool. Well, I know from a game guild's perspective, just to kind of give a little bit more background on us, we're mm -hmm. we're not quite like most game guilds where actually anyone can join our guild. They don't have to operate assets that we own. Yes, we okay. do have groups of players who are, you would call scholars, who are operating guild assets, but we actually have more, a larger player base of our guild is people who own their own assets and are just part of the guild for the community, the collaboration. It would be awesome as guilds to be able to promote ourselves within Kingdom to potentially yeah. attract more players. So that's kind of okay. what I think about from my perspective mm. is like, you know, and we have merchandise that we're working on. We have our own NFTs. It would be really cool to be able to promote that within there. But yeah. I just think about attracting people and kind of getting the, the game guild's name out there and having a place where it's like, yeah, you can own your own kingdom and own your own tiles, but still be part of our, our game guild and mm. have, a, have a forum to be able to discuss that with like the campfire, to be able to have discussions. Mm. I almost think about like almost a Twitter space style kind of events where like once a week we're around the campfire and we invite people over. So mm. I definitely see a lot of really cool opportunities for guilds, especially within your project, just for that social media kind of aspect that you mentioned, being able to promote yourself, mm. talk to other players. And it, it almost fits our model maybe a little bit better than some other game guilds where you have to be a scholar and you have to operate their assets because we can really attract players who might own their own kingdoms already. And then you're almost kind of forming like this alliance of potentially maybe these different kingdoms around uh, the project. So I'm, I'm kind of already thinking like five or six steps ahead on, mm. on really what the game guild can do with your project. And I think there's some huge opportunities there that I hope other game guilds start to kind of see too, because uh, I'm, that's a fast way to grow the project in the community too. Because, you know, some mm. game guilds have hundreds, if not thousands of players, you mm. know, and, and usually when they come in, they come in in droves. So yeah, really exciting stuff, man. Yeah, um, we have some uh, some guild already on, on Kingdom. Uh, I, I don't have the name. I don't remember. I've the seen name, a few. Some, Look, yeah. looking around the map, mm. I've kind of noticed a few, and I think it's cool that you can kind of pop in and say hi and stuff like that too. So yeah, yeah and I'm yeah. sure they're probably seeing some of the same opportunity that we are. Mm. But but I just feel like with our model being a little bit different than a lot of guilds, there's almost more opportunity for us in your project. So that when we were kind of looking cool. and I got, yeah. got my research division to take a look into your project, that was some of the same things they noticed. They're like, wow, this totally fits, you know, our model as a game guild. We can promote ourselves. We can potentially attract other people from the community. Maybe we can partner with other game guilds and who knows where that'll all lead. And it's nice to kind of think about all that because that's kind of what's neat about the social media aspect, right? When you can have community and collaboration, there's so many cool things that can come from that. Mm that even maybe you as a developer might not know because it's the community that can kind of come exactly. together yeah. Just, right, yeah. to, to form those things. Um, mm. 
Now, the last question kind of ties into the one that I wanted to mention. We, we already talked about uh, Polygon, you know, and kind of why you wanted to make that shift. And you said that it was kind of community driven. Um, do you have kind of more details on that? Like, would I be able to buy gold from Ether and Polygon? And then when we're minting the NFTs, it would kind of be the same thing. So you're looking at having the almost interoperability between the two networks so people can always choose? Or do you think there's going to be some limitations um, between those networks? And have you really kind of figured that out yet? Well, actually, we are already testing, like uh, we already developed the Polygon uh, link for the oh, cool. for buy gold. Okay. Um, actually, what we did is like uh, when when you connect, for example, with MetaMask. Uh, if your MetaMask is uh, on the network of uh, Polygon, automatically mm-hmm. the website will detect it and uh, display everything for Polygon. And oh, then nice. if you switch okay. on uh, Ethereum, you will be uh, you will be redirect to the to Ethereum uh, Ethereum uh, bank. Okay. And actually, like, um, so yeah, we are already testing it. So this should, uh, about the gold, like to be able to buy gold with uh, with Polygon should come pretty, maybe early early next month, I think. Okay. And uh, we'll uh, have exactly the same system for the NFT. Okay. So you will be able to choose uh, on which network you want your NFT. Uh, so Ethereum or Polygon. That's fantastic. I know a lot of people will really appreciate that too. Um, I can see the gas fees kind of being the main concern for the shift yeah. between uh, Polygon and Ethereum. I'll, I'll definitely make sure we test both, you know, to kind of see how, how it goes for either. Mm. I can't really say, you know, necessarily that we'd always go the Polygon route just because the gas fees are either are cheaper. But I definitely like that you're open to community suggestions and you guys mm-hmm. are really listening to everyone about that and, and making this implementation because of that. That's something that we actually look for as a game guild. You know, when we're researching or vetting projects, you know, how responsive is the team to community input? And that's something mm-hmm. that I think a lot of projects could learn uh, a little bit more from because if they're not that responsive, obviously there's not going to be a ton of confidence mm-hmm. in the project. But I do want to say, Julian, you know, like we, we're a rather large game guild. We have an entire research division, which vets and researches. I think we have over 60 full-blown reports now for different titles and projects. And all okay. of us were really impressed with Kingdom.Soul. Thank you. You know, mm. you know, not even just what you have currently built today, the 2D art, the structure, you know, the community support, mm. you know, what you're really doing with it. It definitely stood out quite a bit to us as something that we want to be involved in. You know, and that's why I wanted to invite you to come on the show here, because I think a lot of people could really would really appreciate learning about your project and getting involved Mm -hmm. in the early stages, because we also see a ton of potential. But it's also just fun right now. You know, you can log in, you can Mm. play, you can go around, you can collect your carrots and and stones and you can buy, you can get your kingdom and start Mm. buying tiles and chopping wood. Like it's something that we can actually play now, which is actually lacking a bit Mm. in this space. Actually, uh, I can wait to to release uh, the next version, so where pe- people will be able to build stuff. Because uh, now, some, for example, we have uh, like uh, some people that have like uh, maybe uh, eight thousand of uh, carrot, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> collect uh, every day uh, item inside the game, and I really want them to be able to use it now. Like, so the next ah, step yes. is like uh, you collect stuff, but uh, if you collect stuff without to be able to do anything with it, is like pretty. Uh, Meanless, so I can't wait to release the next version so people will be able to collect, but also to start to build stuff. And like, yeah, we will start to have a, um, a complete gameplay uh, start to, to next month. So I, okay. I'm very excited about it uh, and I can't wait to release uh, this update. Yeah. Cool. So, so the the takeaway from that is keep collecting right now and stockpiling so that I we have enough resources that when that up yeah so exactly we can actually yeah, start exactly. start so building. Just to to say like uh, this will be is not meaningless. Like uh, to collect stuff now will be uh, very useful for the next uh, for the next update. Yeah. Now I'm gonna play even more. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> and is is also uh, what I like with Kingdom is like is a collective work. You know, like uh, I really want to make it like. Um, I don't want people to to do only to do stuff only for themselves, mm-hmm. but uh, it's amazing if they do stuff for the community. Like for example, 
uh, more we collect wood and more the game will be beautiful because people will be able to build a lot of things, you know, like, uh, oh, so point. there is a, a, a community aspect that is like we, we start from scratch and we are developing together uh, uh, like a new uh, civilization or new virtual civilization, like uh, where we'll break, break after break, uh, create a, a virtual world. So I like to, yeah, to, to have this aspect where people don't, Create only for for them for the for the kingdom of them, but also to create together something. Yeah. That's a really great point. The yeah. collective community you're contributing yeah, to exactly, the overall yeah. project, the overall whole, the map, mm. which other people can visit, right? Like I like being able to go mm. to other people's tiles exactly, and kind yeah. of explore. Maybe get lucky yeah. and find a carrot or something on their tile, you know. So that yeah. was that was really cool to do. Well, Julian, I really want to thank you mm. for spending some time today with us and talking about your project. And thank you to you. Yeah. You're very welcome. I'm going to have all your mm. links down below to your Discord, your white paper, okay. as well as the website. And of course, if anyone wants to join the Blue Ocean Games Guild Kingdom, I'm going to have the direct link down okay, below cool. too. And also people can always join our Discord or yours if they have any questions or they're curious mm. about getting started or they need any help. And I'm definitely excited to, to get the Game Guild to continue to play. And maybe as things develop and the next update comes out and we're a little bit more involved in your project, we mm. can always have you on for another Talk chat about, potentially uh, sometimes mm. down the road. But I just want to say thanks to everyone for joining us today. Uh, it was a really pleasure having you on, Julian. And until next time, cheers. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.